For crying, there's three different kinds the book talks about. You have your basic cry, an angry cry, and then a pain cry. The basic cry, it has a rhythmic pattern. It usually is a cry, a little silence. You kind of hear a little, and then some more cry, and then a little rest in between the cries, like, wah, wah, wah. Probably they want to be fed. There's variations of this cry. So it could be a hunger cry. It could be a boredom cry. You know, they want something to do. The next one's the anger cry. It's variation. It's very similar, except it's um, a little bit more forceful. Wah, wah, wah. So angry about something. Maybe you waited too long to feed them. Maybe you waited too long to go see if they were bored. And so they moved on to this angry cry. And then the pain. This one's the bad one. If Leif falls down, sometimes it's like, oh, no big deal. You're fine. You're good. But then sometimes he'll fall down and you can tell it's like, it's coming. He'll go. <sighs> he will take in this inhale that is huge because he is going to expel this huge screaming cry. <gasps> and then there'll be this huge inhale. And so that's a pain cry. You know, he fell down, he bumped his head or whatever it is. And so that's, you know, the sound, this is how they work book describes it a sudden long initial loud cry followed by breath holding they're not really they'll let it out and then they'll wait for a little bit and then they'll inhale real big during the first year if a baby is crying you would like to figure out why and you would like to try to solve that problem and in doing so you will hopefully create a secure attachment when they're um, older so when they're awake during the day you want to try to figure out what is going on with why they're crying and you want to try to fix it, create that secure attachment. We talked a little bit about last chapter. During the night when they're crying, if you're trying to do sleep training, you might let them cry it out a little bit. Again, it's not cry it out all night. It's just for a few minutes. But then you go back and you continue to check on them. And again, that's kind of going back to this idea that you're trying to do its best form, but you still want that secure attachment. You still want them to know that you're there. With the sleep training, it can be, I talked about it last time in another chapter, it can be really difficult. And one of the worst experiences I've had with it personally is um, Leif will cry sometimes and go, wah, wah, wah. And, you know, we're trying to wait it out. You know, set a timer, five minutes, wait for five minutes to go by. Wah, wah. And then he'll stop and be like, okay, good, he's done. And then you'll hear, please, please. And it is the saddest thing I've ever heard. It's like, it's painful. But again, right thing versus, um, you know, the right way of doing things versus the easy way. The easy way would be just to go get him. But then what's going to happen is now he is going to sleep in the bed all night and he is just going to have a fun time partying in the bed instead of sleeping. So, but yeah, that's the worst. Please. Okay. Um, yes. Soothing a child first year secure attachment. Um, okay, next slide. It talks a little bit about fear. Uh, stranger anxiety peaks during this time. It's a fear, a wariness of strangers. It begins at about six months of age. It's going to occur more often in settings that are outside of the home. So they might be scared of seeing strangers at the store. They're going to be more afraid at the store than they will be at daycare or at home because those settings are less familiar. Um, one of the ways that they deal with this fear is they will look to the caregiver to see how they're responding. So if you see somebody at the store and you start interacting with them, the baby's going to look to see how you're dealing with this stranger. It's called social referencing. There's like referencing what you're doing socially, reading your emotional state. So if you're having a pleasant interaction with this person, oh, okay, they must be okay. If you're if there's some kind of a confrontation, then they're going to pick up on that and they're going to be like, okay, this stranger's not good. It helps infants interpret ambiguous situations is how the textbook describes it. Something else that will happen around this time is separation protest. So it's a crying whenever the caregiver leaves and it peaks at about 15 months. Um, and yes, so you take them to daycare and you'll drop them off and everything will be great. But then one day you drop them off and they don't want you to leave and they start crying and they start hugging on, hugging you and all this. And so they'll peak at about 15 months. But again, it's kind of like sleep training. It's just something they will eventually get over. Related to these things is what's called emotional regulation. And infants, they start to uh, be able to develop skills to um, minimize or inhibit some of the emotions that they're feeling. Um, for example, this 20-month-year-old example I'm talking about, there was a kid in the book they talked about. He's trying to go to sleep, 
and they're listening to him on the baby monitor. Like when I was discussing it earlier, we have a baby monitor, and so I can listen to Leif when he's going to sleep. Um, they hear the baby crying, and he stops crying, and he says, go to sleep, Alex. Go to sleep. So he's talking to himself. He's telling himself to go to sleep. And so what he's doing there is he's basically developing this ability to control his emotions and to kind of like think through things logically, even at 20 months. So that's uh, pretty impressive. That's it for crying in fear. What comes up next is temperament.